Okay, guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Wrestle Slam, the podcast. I'm joined by Phil, Matt, and Jur, who's kindly come on in the midst of being at work. That's dedication at its finest. Um, Don't tell so work. We won't. We, we won't give you a location. It's somewhere in Cove. <laughs> somewhere in Cove, off, off, off the seas. Um, the show's brought to you by Manscaped.com, so do check out Manscaped. Um, and as you said, look, we have a promo code. It is 20% off. Use that promo code, Wrestle Slam. And as always... You will get 20% off. Um, so first of all, we have to go balls deep. Hard Knocks was in Limerick. It was in Dolan's Warehouse. It was a fucking epic night. We had Juron commentary with Queen Lizzie. Um, and yet again, it was a show. It was a venue. It was a spectacular event. Um, Terry Thatcher, the new champ. And there was a little hint prior to that. We had a little chat with him. And we could have mentioned November 20. It might be a very important day for Terry. And we were right. He became champ, and it was well overdue, and it's it's the start of many more championships, no doubt. But first of all, uh, Phil, you were in yeah. Limerick. We were all there, the whole lot of us. What was your thoughts on the venue? What was your thoughts on Hard Knocks and all the matches? Do you know what? Just just going back there to Terry, he was quite kind of emotional, on he, in that interview? Yeah. You, you could kind of tell there was something up. I mean, that was like, what, an hour before the show? Yeah, it, it's like normally you, you, you try and get signs and you, you say stuff, but I think it was the way he kind of looked at us. It was kind of like um you felt something was going to happen or he was kind of said it was his last chance and he was saying um that, like, you know what I mean, he's worked so hard and he has. He's, he's a veteran, you know what I mean? This guy's been around a long time. He's taken a lot of knocks. He's a real good wrestler. um And it just, it just goes to show that it's paid off, you know what I mean? Hair knocks, is, it's going to be huge, but it was... A fantastic day for Terry and Hair Knox in general, Phil. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely. But just going back to the, the show, the venue was perfect for wrestling. Yeah. I know, Jar, you were yeah. up in the balcony. The balcony looked savage. Like, we couldn't even get up yeah. there. It was so packed. It was fucking jointed up there. There was people all over us. Like, we were in the booth, like, but, you know, there was people literally right on top of us looking over the balcony to try and see in. Like, it was, the atmosphere yeah. in there was phenomenal. Like, it was First time in Dolan yeah. for any event. It was, it was a great I can't idea. wait to see it back on, uh, on, on video. Yeah. And like, uh, the, how, 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 oh, sorry. No, no, go on. Like, I just going to ask Jar how was it to do commentary because that's your first time doing this. Ah, uh, fuck, man. It was unbelievable. I was shitting myself. We were all shitting ourselves at the start because obviously it's a new fucking, it's a new promotion and we've never done commentary before. So we, we, you know, we were trying to make sure we don't fuck it up, like, you know, for the first one. We, like, we didn't tell anybody we were in commentary right up until the day, like, like other than a few people. Like, we just, just in case our commentary was so bad that they just cut it out and redubbed it over somebody else in some <laughs> fucking American accent, you know, somebody who sounded better than us. So hopefully that hasn't happened yet. Like, but uh, yeah, it was unreal, like, just to be sitting up there, like, and actually being involved in some way in a wrestling event, you know, like, never wanted to be a wrestler going up. I don't think I would ever have been a wrestler going up, like, but just being a fan of wrestling and actually, you know, getting to be involved in that side of wrestling just just once in my life is a dream like so whether it ever happens again i don't know like but you know that'll be it now for my life like i'll, I'll remember that for the rest of my life and as you say look we, we, we like it, it's when we talk venue matt murphy when we talk venue and we talk we talk you know what i mean it's it, it's it was iconic as you say you have a big huge balcony so for anyone who hasn't been to dolan's and limerick first of all this 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 venue is iconic it's brought, you know, incredible acts throughout the world to Limerick over the years. If you walk around inside, you obviously have a couple of bears upstairs. There's like fucking all sorts of stuff happening. But then you have the warehouse where the wrestling actually happened. Um, it was just surreal. Like we were kind of squashed against the wall next to the merchandise. We were very lucky to even get that spot because we were doing interviews and obviously we came out and it was jam fucking packed. But Matt Murphy, what was your take on the venue itself? Yeah, I'm not going to lie lads, but uh, uh, I don't think we've ever been in a in an air, an arena like that. It's, it wasn't even an arena. It was just an average pub. It just happened to have a wrestling ring in it. Because mm -hmm. me, Phil, and Jerry in the car, we were talking about Dolan's Warehouse. Because I'd been there before when I was younger, a few gigs. And I immediately was thinking, how the fuck are they going to put a wrestling ring? Where's everyone going to be standing? But Steve and his crew like, made it work. Uh, it, it literally does have like that kind of like an underground like feel to it uh, that was just between the bar, between like the ring and the wall. Like you said, we were getting squished in. Like we were like, the only thing was like, imagine being close up to the ring when you're younger. We were way too close to the ring. 
And like, yeah, just like the up by during Liz's area was just absolutely packed full, just looking down, watching the event. Like, so, so it was just such an unreal feel to it. Like, like, uh, and if uh, anyone who's never been to Dole's Warehouse, if you're a Coconian, that's like saying that um, we're going to have a wrestling event in either Fred Zeppelin or, or the Crane Lane. It's it's like that in some way. It's like, how are you going to fit in? But they made it possible. So, for an unreal experience and also delighted we got to do some media work. We got to chat to the talent behind the scenes. Uh, and it was just, you know, so behind the scenes and seeing Matt show was just something to be a part of. Glad that we got to be a part of it. So, yeah, it was just something else looking forward for the next one. That's Definitely. And it deserves more time, Joe. We have to mention, Joe, obviously, yeah. Herb Knox, it was a debut show. They needed to make a statement. Like Steve Savage, we know he's an absolute grafter and a half. He's a, he's got a big crew himself, Leon. Yeah. And there's there's a great team there. But it's it's the start of big teams. And like when you look at that lineup, George, they didn't hold back. You had LJ Clary, Scotty mm-hmm. Davis, uh, Sammy D. They they had, you know, Fabio, they had the elite of the elite, that the hottest talent in Irish West, and they brought over yep. LA, LA Taylor from the UK. And um, they didn't hold back. So like it's it's fair to say that Herd Knox is truly on the way. Yeah, 100%. They're looking to make a statement first day. Like, you know, you want to put on as the best talent that you, that you have. Like, you know, and like you said, with Terry Thatcher earlier, like, you know, he's, you know, he's been around a long time. Like, you know, he's never had that big moment, you know, winning the title. Like, so, mm-hmm. you know, massive props to them for, you know, putting somebody like Terry Thatcher over when you've got LJ and Martin Steers and Fabio and stuff on the card. Like, so, and the Golden Ticket Tournament was, was, you know, it, you know, it took a lot to understand what it was like, but you know, when you find out what it's what it means, like it's as a it's a great, you know, concept, you know, they, they hold the ticket, but anybody can challenge them for the ticket. So they're not guaranteed a title shot with the ticket. Somebody else can just step up to them and that's gonna make their next couple of shows, you know, when, when they announce the rest of the shows. I know they've won in February coming up, but when they keep announcing shows and everybody still got those tickets. So, you know, they're all up for grabs and anybody can win them. Definitely is, is, is it is it all in the game? For the next one. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, we, we know Steve Savage has an eye. He knows what he's doing. Um, And, and just like any guy in Ireland right now, it's the Irish indie scene. I think we spent half our interviews talking about the Irish indie scene in general. It's just a great time to be alive, a great time to be an Irish wrestling fan. Like, Phil, it, like, it just, it's, it's, it's the perfect way to start a debut show, isn't it? Like, we had RCW, uh, which was epic in Cork, Limerick an hour and a bit away. Um, Steve Savage, Leon, all the crew, Herd Knox, they put on an incredible show. So it must be a great team for all the indie wrestlers in Ireland. They they, I mean, they, they have a variety, you know. It's almost like is it every uh, kind of place now has a kind of wrestling thing, like you've Limerick, Cork, Dublin, up 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 George direction, or oh, yeah. NNW and Five Factory, and there's just it's never been so healthy the Irish scene. Um, it is. My only, my only worry is the. A we every show every a weekly show would could it could it hurt the in the long run? Uh, time will tell. Time will tell. It's 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 definitely um a good question to ask. You know what I mean? If there's so much happening, um, and you have well, certain... it's just the problem is the hardcore fans might get burnt out if there's like a show every single Friday, Saturday, every single week. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it remains to be seen. That's that's a. That's a well, good it's, question. it's more travel than anything because, like, it's you know yourself, you're like when you're coming back down, you work Monday morning, yeah, I know, yeah. But, like, you know, it's it was a bit nicer traveling back from the than I was traveling back from Dublin and going to work the next morning because I've yeah, done yeah. that a few times as well. Like, so it, it's nice that there's a variety, like, in Munster, like, you know, that Limerick is there now that there's an option to go to Limerick, and yeah. as long as they don't clash with RCW, like, you know, we'll be able to go to both of them as much as we can, like. I reckon Joe, there's, there's something in place though. I reckon I always thought about that, like the way there's never been a clash as of yet. But like I don't think I'd say they all would probably have a chat. Like I'd say, yeah, there's, I'd say there's, there's something there, you know what I mean? Where they, they yeah. all mention their dates and this is what we're doing. Yeah. And they'd probably well, we were talking to the Katie Harvey a few weeks back there. She she mentioned as well, like that she works with obviously she would have worked with Phoenix and RCW now in Titanic. So they have, you know, a lot of the same roster. So that's something they'll have to work with hard knocks as well as you know that's what they're not putting on shows and the talent aren't getting double booked for stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting. It's interesting, and it remains, uh, you know, to be the hottest scene in in Europe right now. Obviously, the UK, everyone's blowing about the UK, but look, Ireland is up there. I'm telling you, and 
it, it's only a matter of time before we see what happens. I'm going to keep it indie. I'm going to keep it Ireland. I'm going to talk OTT. And yeah. beautiful, beautiful Joe teasing us all. I mentioned the other day in the group chat something big was going to happen. And I didn't get a tip off, but I got a vibe chat to someone that there was someone big. But I'll say this, there's going to be one more big name. They one announced, more. did they announce, just announce Eddie, Eddie Kingston? Well, Eddie today. Kingston announced in a, in, in a, a beautiful kind of way where we're like, right, it, it's, it's, he's got to be coming, but they haven't said, you know, what's happening. Yeah, um, that's the start of it, lads. I'm telling you, there's going to be one more. Matt, my words. Matt, my words. I have a feeling Pat might come back. Yeah, maybe something, something nope. big's happening. I'm telling you. And Eddie, Eddie's still signed to All Elite Wrestling, like. Oh yeah, hundred percent. He is probably savage. Uh, <laughs> who's the All Atlantic Champion? Or it's still Orange Cassidy? Is it? Yeah, it's Cassidy. Yeah. No. No. Will we see Orange Cassidy back? Will we see Pac? Yeah. Or are we going to see Moxley? Which Moxie I think is, is going on a holiday, I reckon. Yeah, <laughs> a, a holiday to a holiday to Ireland. <laughs> Jan, Jan, January, he's coming, but it's uh. Mox is gonna be on holidays now, and, and George is gonna drop a leaflet for like OTT. And he's like, I'm just gonna leave it here. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> we well, we're gonna take Moxie to the Blairney Castle, and we're gonna show him many great destinations in Cork. Um. But yeah, look, it's 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 great. Obviously, OTT teasing us as always. You know, December is upon us. December, lads, is a crazy, crazy, crazy month. And there's even November, obviously, for uh, Fight Factory, there's a lot happening. But it's it's good, and it's it's got us talking. We've we've spent numerous minutes every show talking about the 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 Irish scene. Do you know what I mean? So, if you go back two years ago, we were talking about one organization, and now we're talking about four or five. You know what I mean? It's pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, good 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 time to be alive. Um, but yet again, great, great job, Hair Knox, great job, Steve Savage, Leon, all the crew, Joe Liz, commentary box. We're looking forward to hearing it. The 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 one liners and you know we couldn't really hear much from where we were. It was so fucking loud, so it was yeah. really, really good. So we're looking forward to seeing it and hearing it as well. Um, we did you get to, to uh, did you did you get to unleash your inner the book of G or did you have to keep it? Professional. No, no, we were we were allowed to. We had free flow. Like right? obviously, we didn't want to go mad into it, like, but we were allowed to be ourselves, like. So we tried our yeah. best. I didn't try to put on a fake American accent or anything. I just, <laughs> just I, I'm just looking forward to hearing it. And then we just hear Joe's like, how I would book it. And I was like, oh, here we go, book a G <laughs> on hot knocks. But another day, nah, I didn't. I didn't go down that route. Maybe the next show if we if we get a call back. When's it actually you. out? They say when it's coming out. Uh, not not official yet. Uh, hopefully in the next week or two. Probably hopefully. Yeah, no, looking forward to it. We really are. Um, it's as you say, it's it's a good gig. So hopefully they're uh, they're offering the big contract, the big money for the yeah. next couple. And Matt Matt didn't take a bump this time. It's probably the first independent show in our, in in Monster. He hasn't got taken a bump. If somebody didn't jump out and land on top of him. Yeah, uh, I think the only, the only bump we got is like I told you this up uh, up about the commentary box during the intermission, and I think uh, Jared Phil heard this was like during Steve Savage's um entrance, everyone got like masks except for us. And I think there was like a like, fellow next to us saying, "Sorry, did you, did you not get any masks?" And then <laughs> like, no, we didn't. And then they, he said, "Are you from Cork?" Yeah. And then uh, I said, uh, "Yeah, we are." He was like, "Right." I was like, great, that explains it. So I was like, that's the only problem. It's like, we got the bump for Cork. So in that area. So, yeah. No, it was, the, the, we, we have to quickly mention Steve Savage's entrance, Raven Creed being as dominant as fucking ever. Like, Raven Creed is back with a bang. Uh, pandemic, obviously, we didn't see much. She's back. And look, this year has been a really good year for her. I think she's uh, she's pushing towards something big, lads. I think she's going to be snapped up soon. I'm telling you. She really mm. is. Was very, she was very tight lipped about something, all right, in the interview. Yeah, yeah. There we go. We we always look for our spoilers, but like as you said, over the years, you know, I remember speaking to Nixon Newell, and she said, uh, "I'm I'm doing something big next year." That was WWE. So, yeah, I think Raven Creed, she's definitely the way she could give that look, and she gives a really good look. By the way, it's either like she's gonna beat the fuck out of you, or something's happening. And yeah, I think she's she's something. She's after signing something. I think I I really have that vibe. So I don't know if there's something in the UK, is there something across the pond, but something's have to happen, definitely. Um, so interesting, you know what I mean? Cox, mega superstar, Raven Creed. We hope it's uh, some good news coming the new year. Um, right, so look, obviously we have to mention MGF, guys. 
and he is the new All Elite World Champion. Joe, what's your thoughts on MGF? The money, the myth, the legend. He's the champ. It's obviously great for business. Yeah, uh, definitely the right call. I'm glad that they didn't did not put him over. Like he was, uh, he's destined. He was destined a long time ago to be their the face of AEW. Like for AEW to compete, you know, he, he he's a money he's a money draw. He's a ratings draw. Like every time he's on the show, you know, nine times out of ten, their their ratings are way up. Um, he's got everything. You know, he's 26 years old. He can talk better than anybody. And he's jacked to shit now after his breakaway. He looks the part. He sounds the part. He's got everything. There's nothing he doesn't have at 26 years old to be the future of wrestling for, you know, whether it's AEW for long term or WWE for long term. But right now he's AEW champion and he will hold that belt until his contract is due. The day his contract is due to expire in 2024, convinced that it'll be, he'll run away with the title, you know, by you know, I'll see him punk kind of stuff. Like they'll, they'll play it out until his contract expires. And I don't think, you know, It'll be stupid if AEW can't keep him after his contract is up, though. Yeah, it's just it's what what's on the plate. Like obviously, you know, he's he's doing a bit of acting, and and it's just what what's the offer? What are they going to give him? Are they going to give him? Obviously, they'll match money. There's no doubt about that. Tony's going to match the money that. Uh, like, will, will WWE pitch? Or he will put you into the WWE studios. You know, we're, we're going to make you yeah. a movie star. It's it's. You know, I don't well, know. Nick Khan is Nick Khan has big contacts in Hollywood. Like that's why he one of the reasons he's in WWE is because his contacts. So. You know, that, that's something they can dangle in front of him as well. Like, you know, we make him a massive movie star like The Rock or fucking John Cena. Like, that's that's where they're comparing him. They're comparing him now as in Hulk Hogan, The Rock, Cena, Roman Reigns, and MJF. This is, you know, he's going to be the guy for the future of wrestling. So, you know, the way things are going with Roman Reigns, it looks like he's going to end up in Hollywood as well soon enough. So MJF could be the next one to do that. And... Phil, it's fair to say that MGF, he, he looks like the schmuck. He looks like the bad guy in the movie that the people like. He reminds me of, like, how, how can I pronounce it? Like, just say a Home Alone kind of film, right, where he's the villain and he's kind of fucking, he's wearing his scarf walking around New York and people just love to hate him. He's 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 incredible. Someone put up a picture of New York there and there was, like, you know the way they sell the scarves? And it, it, they're all the yeah. lookalikes. They're saying the scarves are out the window. They're like, you know what I mean? People want to buy all these merchandise on the website. He is just absolute gold. And yet again, I remember I remember him in Dublin at OTT. Yep. 2017. And I was like, who the fuck is this guy? This guy was just cutting a promo in the ring. Looked like a baby face and everyone was booing him. And, and, and look at him. Look at him now. MGF, all elite it champion. That, it was that night I said it actually, wasn't it? Well, you said that to me, you're there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You said it. You said this guy's yeah. gonna do something big. Watch and yeah. and, he, and he was only and he's only twenty one years old back then, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's fucking mental. madness. It's madness. But it's um, he's he's absolute gold, Phil. Look, you predicted it. You said it was going to happen. Yes. Um, are you proud of your boy? Do you know, I am. But I'm waiting out to see where he goes next. That's the key. Oh, it's who's he going to feud with? Um, the finals of the tournament is on tomorrow night. Uh, Ricky Starks Star. Star. Star had the uh, is it Brian Cage? No, it's not Ethan Page. Ethan Page, yeah, yeah. Starks so, has to win. Starks will win, yeah. They won't have Ethan Page against MGF. What but... what they've got with Ricky Starks, you know, he he has that vibe of the Rock as well. Like he's got that charisma. Like when he cuts a promo, you just you know he's going to say something controversial. Like you're going to. Either pop for it, or they're gonna go. Ooh, he just—I can't believe he just said something. He needs to be that kind of guy now against MJF. Like they could have a massive feud for the next six months. Like if they if they build it right. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Like the, the thing is, Moxie now is gonna be gone for six weeks, but surely he'll get a rematch when he comes back. Mm. He has so to get a rematch. Yeah, uh, I could see uh, MJ like holding the title till his contract comes to an end. Uh, I could see him being the top guy in AEW. He's already is or at the moment, but I feel like every championship title he's going to defend the title. He's always going to either do a cocky win or find his way out. I could see him actually just doing a challenge where he's just going to face just AEW guys because yeah. yeah. we we all know who MJF is. Even if you're a long time viewer of WWE, you know who he is now. I feel like they're going to do that with him now. Just face him with non WWE fellas. 
because now we know who MJF is, even if you barely know the other wrestler. So, so I can see him holding on to the title till his contract comes to an end. Not saying he's gonna bring it over to WWE now, but he is just gonna like have it over his head at least, like so. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, he was. I was just trying to look. I'm trying to find who he actually fought at OTT because I can't remember. I was. I, was I think it was a six man tag or something. It was a tag match. Yeah, yeah, it was. I was. Just it was the same through. Patrick's Day one. They won with a uh, Walter and Devlin, but it was the other match. The other match they had. Yeah, I was just looking through the database there, but yeah, it's it's just ah, uh, guys, he's absolute fucking gold. He's he's like speaking oh. of all of the wrestling, like lads, the the ratings are up. They're 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 smashing the ratings. The pops, I think. What about, what about uh, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks returning, Jor? See the little oh. pop, see the way they came out, like, it's just, oh. Yeah. They mm. come out to one of my favourite songs ever, like, which was fucking phenomenal, like, you know, if you're yeah. if you're a fan of Supernatural or fucking, if you've watched Anchorman, you know, the crows and credits of Anchorman has that song with the bloopers over the top of it, which is, which is brilliant, so, you know, and they were mentioning, uh, I watched BT, uh, Being the Elite there last night, and they mentioned backstage, like, that, that, that was the song they came out to in their back garden, and it was their dad's favorite song. Like that's one of the reasons why they used it, and they only got the rights to it the night before the pay per view. Like they were struggling to get the rights, and they eventually got it. So, you know, massive for that. Like, yeah, and, you know, great to see them back. Uh, Prize they lost. I wasn't I was expecting. Delighted. To win. I was delighted. Yeah, I'm glad they lost because you know they can't just you know bouncing the titles around the place like. But you know, Kenny took the pin like so. Seven matches with these teams like, is going to be fucking crazy though. Yeah, oh, they should have added like a ladder match, uh, other matches, other matches. They should have, but they're, happen, they're, yeah. they're absolute gold, aren't they? Like, as you say, fucking, you know what I mean? They, they, they're, they're the guys that we can probably see back in Dublin. We have to mention all elite were in Dublin many years ago. OTT, Jesus Christ, imagine getting them back for one more night. And I think Omega actually said it in the ring, he goes, We will be back. And when yeah. they say stuff like that, do you know what I mean? Um, it, it's, it's very tough. With the, I think is that Joe said you about the schedule, and it's very tough. Yeah, yeah. It depends on it depends on the AEW schedule, like when they're coming to the UK. Like so, if they're coming, there's there's talk that they might do a, a dynamite in London on a Wednesday and do the rampage live on a on a Friday or in Manchester. They might move around. So nice. You know whether they stay for a week or they just fly back again. You know, it'll be nice if they came over. Uh, on their day off, maybe at the, on the Saturday or an OTT show is on the Saturday that same week that they could just fucking fly over and do it. You, you know, um, the biggest pop of the night, the weekend for me was Jamie Hayter when he arrived. Fucking yeah. loved it. Oh, yeah. it was so good. And there was so, the, match, the match was so good as well because I thought he was going to lose like three, four times. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. Like. As always, we congratulate a new champion on our show. So, Jamie Heather, congratulations. It's been a great road. It's been a long road for you, um, but truly deserved, obviously, beating Tony Storm for the interim championship. Um, and it was a great match. The pop was incredible. And it's fair to say we're big fans. Like, her journey's been incredible, guys. She really yeah, has well, worked well, really hard well, these well. last couple of years. So, uh, Jamie, congratulations from uh, myself, uh, from Phil Jur and Matt. Uh, and you know many more championships to come. There's no doubt about it. Um, but yeah, I, I think for me guys, that pay per view was incredible. It, it was definitely outstanding. And I might want to stay up as much, but like you know what I mean. The fact that I stayed up, like obviously I watched Raw last night live. Um, and you know I stay up and watch most pay per views. I'll be watching obviously Saturday War Games Survivor Series. That would be live also, guys, in the Mako. So if you are around. Do pop into the Macau. I will be there. I'm sure we're going to see a lot more people there. We have like a little fan base in Cork, and a lot of the guys will be there. So look, if you want to come into the Macau, they also sell pizzas. Good, brand new pizzas on the menu. Pop into the Macau Casino Cork this Saturday for War Games Survivor Series. It will be live at the Macau Cork. And um, we have to quickly mention War Games guys because there won't be a bit of a big show this week, uh, just due to scheduling. But um, Joe, what stands out for you this week in regards to war games? Does any any matches that really stand out? Um, yeah, well, obviously the the two war games matches are the big ones because the first time they're ever going to be on a major, you know, WWE pay per view on on the main roster. You know, they've they've had a few in NXT, which are have all been phenomenal. Like, so it's good that they've got like Pete Dunne in there, who's already had a war games match in NXT. Um, I think. Solo Sokoa's on last year's one, wasn't he? They had the, the senior NXT versus the new NXT. Yeah. So um, it's good yeah. that there's experience there on both teams. But, you know, we're finally getting that big fucking bloodline feud, like, you know, that, you know, Drew and Kevin Owens and Sheamus, like, 
whether Sheamus gets the title match against you know Roman next or Kevin Owens, you know they they could tease that throughout the match. Um, the women's one is going to be phenomenal as well. They've got to tease. I think they they said Friday night they're going to announce who the the fifth woman is. Um, I, I, but AJ, they're going to hold off. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to AJ and Finn Balor, like because we only ever got that match once at that Survivor Series when Bray was out sick. So you know it'll be nice that that we get a feud like that again. Like what? I think the whole heart, whole card is going to be something else. I I just read there that Becky Lynch is expected to be fifth member. Really? Of the, of the mm. women. Oh, I thought it'd be Charlotte. I just read there like five minutes ago. Yeah, like it's there's just so many people involved in this match, and obviously it's a women's war games match. It's obviously Bianca, Alexa, Asuka. Uh, they've changed a name again. So Mia uh, Yim, me, what, Misha. Me, Mishin, Mishin. Or... but Mishin means crazy in Korean, so it's okay. It's yeah. it's something she probably came up with. Yeah, um, obviously damage control, Bailey, Dakota, um, Nikki, Rhea Ripley. It's yeah, it's just it's an interesting match. So I originally did think it was going to be um Nixon Newell, aka what's the name again? She is coming back, but it's way the Tegan Knox. Tegan Knox, yeah. So gone yeah. blank. Um, yeah. yeah, and obviously we have to mention Ronda Rosie. Is she's fighting people? Ronda's kind of, yeah. yeah Ronda's kind of. I'm worried about that match because they Ronda. Ronda's in there with someone who's, who's dangerous. Like she's been labeled dangerous. Yeah, yeah. And she's a former former tag team champ as well. NXT. And I I like Shotzi, but like there's just if you saw the ladder match <laughs> that she had recently. Yeah, it was a bit. Did mad. you see the match on SmackDown with Shayna Baszler? Oh, where she hit her nose. Yeah. Yeah, Ronda won't take lightly to that. Like, if something goes wrong, there's a botch. I'd say Ronda will slap her, like, you know. There's a couple yeah. of bits of news there because I know we don't have long left. Yeah, yeah, shut away. Uh, Chelsea Green and Mark Cardona are on their way back to WWE. Um, yeah. yeah. Very, very soon. Uh, Do you reckon that'll be the Rumble, lads? I'd say, will it? It'd be forehand, I'd say. I I, I think uh, Mark Cardona did talk about this and he straight up said if he is coming back, he doesn't want to be Zack Ryder. It's obvious he wants to be just himself. And I, I agree. Not just because we met him in OTT. I agree. It was like he, he showed that he could be more than a woo 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 fella. He's definitely legit, lads. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just trying to keep the news quick because I know we don't have time. Johnny yeah. Gargano's new, new team song. Guys, don't talk to me about Johnny. He got fucking <laughs> squashed bad and raw last night. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's he's the new ricochet. He's been fucked about big time. And, and, I, I think yeah. the problem is there's nothing there for him, and there won't be anything until after uh, Mania because I think they're just going to focus on what they're doing now. I'm going to yeah. quickly say I'm going to quickly say Raw was poor last night, lads. It was like the start was good and there was a good opening and stuff, but I'm I'm telling you, lads, Raw was pretty pretty awful. Yeah. It was it was like Vince was in the back doing something. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But um, we have to get the math fact quickly. Matt, what is your math fact? For today, the twenty second of November two thousand and twenty two. Right, are you ready for math facts, lads? Yeah. Right, Phil, 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 add in like a cheer, cheering effect. Go, man. Anyway, math fact. So, I'm not gonna lie, lads. For a while, we we said this for a while. Survivor Series has always been a big pay per view, but it wasn't as big as you know, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, and SummerSlam. Some of them even had like load moments, and for a while, Survivor Series is known as like that pay per view with random elimination tag matches. Uh, and it was back in Survivor Series two thousand and nine. It was actually one of the lowest pay per view buy ons before the WWE Network era. And Vince actually was planning on just like slowly eliminating the Survivor Series pay per view, but when apparently with this hurt, in fact, there was a huge backlash over it. Vince is going to remove it just because the low buy rate for this one Survivor Series. So Vince just slow, instead of like, when he removed it, he just inserted it back in. It was going to be called No Survivors. It could be wrong, but it could be another pay-per-view. It's Survivor Series, just a different title. So 2010, he brought it back and it still had a few good buy-ons, but it was just this fact that everyone we all talk about was like, a oh, Survivor Series is not as great. But just when they were going to get rid of it, the fans brought it back. So we almost lost Survivor Series to Holy shit. no Survivors or whatever. So yeah, there's a little bit of a math fact that's oh, power yes. of the fans. Quickly, you touched the fact, Jar. If you could bring back one pay-per-view, what would it be? 
fuck, I could get rid of a few pay-per-views first. Uh, bring in one <laughs> back. Christ. Um, I don't know. The King old, the old, back the back. King the old takeovers, or you know, the old takeovers before the big pay-per-views. You know, the takeover shows they used to have in wherever they hold Monday Night Raw before, like WrestleMania or something like that. Like, would have been, they were something yeah. else. Like, as an old WWE pay-per-views, uh, I don't know, maybe Armageddon or something. Yeah, that for me, that that and uh, King of the Ring, hundred percent. Or, or the Rock Appreciation, the Rock's yeah. pay-per-view. Never know. <laughs> Yeah. They're they're saying that uh the you're saying King of the Ring is actually rumored to be coming back as a yeah. pay per view next year. Yeah, they should do it right though. Remember it was kind of bad yeah. there towards the end. Do do it right and bring, bring it back to the way it used to be. Yeah. Uh, no, I remember when Billy Gunn won at that time. I thought that was Billy Gunn's promise to fucking win a world title. But yeah, Billy's doing all other stuff and all elite now. Phil, for you quickly, what would be uh, a good one to bring back? Uh, King of the Ring straight away. Um... King of the Ring. I, I used to love ninety three, ninety four ones especially. Yeah, um, Owen Hart, happy days, happy days. Yeah, quality. Yeah, good times. But look, yet again, guys, we'd like to thank everyone for tuning into Wrestle Slam the podcast. Uh, brought to you by Manscaped dot com. Um, as you said, we covered hair locks. If you weren't there, make sure you're at the new one. Uh, you'll see the the updates on on the hair locks Twitter page and and on our Facebook page. So February two thousand and twenty three is when they will be back. RCW is back next year. Yeah, OTT have some big shows in due course the next couple of weeks so do grab your tickets for that also Fight Factory um, they have two big shows before the end of the year as well guys so make sure you support Katie Harvey uh, Phil and all the crew up there as well incredible team all working hard to bring you some big nights um, so yeah it's, it's, it's yeah, look, good show obviously there's a lot to cover but obviously War Games will be on this Saturday and I will be live in the McCoke Casino Cork um, so if you were in Cork and you want to watch that live, then pop in. Um, strictly over ratings, um, and also Hair Knox, the show itself will be out in due course, guys. So do keep an eye and let us know what you think of Jur and Queen Lizzie's commentary. Uh, they'll be brought back for the next one. There'll be a contract. You know what I mean? We want to see it. So what what are they worth? Let us know what they're worth. What contract should be put on the table for them as well? That's the key. You know what I mean? There's money in commentary. And look, it's 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 a long road ahead to to America. If you're driving there, probably takes a couple of days. But look, they can always fly. They can get there. And look, we might see them in the commentary with Tony Schiavone, Jim Ross mm-hmm. in the near future. So that'd be epic. But um, guys, thank you for tuning in to Wrestle Stand the podcast. George, thank you for taking time on your busy work schedule to come. Yes, we appreciate very it, busy. Very busy. Phil, Matt, thank you guys. And we'll catch you all soon. God bless. Be safe. Cheers. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.